Welcome back to another exciting episode of Cyber Defense TV. I'm your host, Gary Malefsky, and the publisher of Cyber Defense Magazine. As you know, I've been interviewing some great people from all over the globe. And we have the CEO of one of my favorite companies from the United Kingdom, John Michael, is the CEO and the founder of a company you're going to love, iStorage. Correct. I said it right. And where do we store the data? Let's listen to John and learn because he's got something you're going to want to buy, and it is made in the UK with pride. Thank you. So yeah, iStorage is a company I founded in July 2009. We design, develop, and manufacture a range of uh, pin-authenticated, hardware-encrypted, portable data storage devices. So all the devices have an onboard keypad. You simply enter a 7 to 15 digit pin on the device to authenticate the device. If it's the correct pin, then the data is decrypted. Then you uh, can use it on any platform, any hardware platform, running any operating system. So works of Windows, with Mac OS, with Linux, Android, Chrome, embedded devices, basically anything with a USB port. And it's fast. Very fast. So it's all done in hardware, so there's no software required. Uh, so it's hardware encryption. Uh, once you've authenticated the devices, then they run as fast, if not faster, than non-encrypted flash drives, hard drives, and solid state drives. What if I lose my password or forget my password? So you can set, uh, your IT department, for example, could set an admin pin on the device and the user can set their own pin. If the user forgets the pin, then the admin can still access the data on the drive. By entering the admin pin, it deletes the old user pin, allowing you to enter and configure a new one. What if I have 80 million records from my healthcare database for my company on that drive and I dropped it at the airport by accident? Uh, you mean if you lost it? Or if yeah, you, I lost it. Okay, if you lost it, so uh, we recommend you always keep your precious data on more than one device. But if you've lost the hardware, then you've only lost a piece of hardware that doesn't cost very much, but your data is safe. I don't have to uh, call up the press and say we had a big breach, GDPR, Not at all. GDPR, etc. Not at all. So if you lose one of our devices, uh, you, you do not need to report it because the data is encrypted. Uh, you so have to get some serious testing for that. Do you have any certification? Sure, we have. Uh, we're actually the only company on the planet that has uh, four different levels of certifications, government certifications on our products. So we have uh, in the U.S. we have FIPS 140-2 Level 3. In the U.K. we have NCSC, which is National Cyber Security Center (CPA), which stands for Commercial Product Assurance. In the Netherlands we have BSPA. And we also have NATO restricted level. I'm going to ask you a really tough question because you're sitting in the hot seat. Are you going to stop selling these to Australia if they say everything that comes to our country requires a back door now? Uh, we would. We would. Uh, if, if, for Let, me example, your hand. Let me shake your hand. <laughs> and that's going to ruin their country. Of course. I mean, you, there's going to be no products imported there anymore. And if, if you have back doors in, in any of these devices, then it makes them vulnerable to hackers. So if, if, uh, if we did put any backdoors in our firmware, in our program, then a hacker can, can basically take advantage of that. Nation state, cyber criminal, exactly. cyber terrorist, uh, it doesn't yeah, anonymous, sense. Why, why do it, right? It doesn't you make sense. a backdoor for one person, you make it for everybody. Exactly, yeah. So you've got great certifications, you've got strong encryption. Tell us the encryption uh, models you're using. So all our devices are encrypted using AES 256-bit uh, encryption. It's all done in hardware, uh, and it's we use the XTS mode, which is the latest uh, AES encryption algorithm. That's great. Yeah. Uh, you've got these in all different sizes. Let's say I'm NHS, and I learned my lesson from the WannaCry breach. Yeah. And I really feel bad, because when that hit the UK, it seemed to me to be a denial of service, not give me money. Because kids couldn't get their operation for four days in the hospital. Correct. Now, if they could have had all that data backed up and a quick restore process on a safe, secure, encrypted larger drive, mm -hmm. that would have maybe got them running within 24 hours or less. Much less. Do you have a bigger box? We do. So we, for the flash drives, we offer them currently in capacities from 4 gigabytes up to 64 gigabytes. Then we have our portable hard drives, which go up to 5 terabytes. We do these also as solid state drives up to 4 terabytes, and we'll soon have 8 and 16 terabytes. And we have a bigger version of the product, which goes up to 14 terabytes. So I see a lot of usages for this. Um, let's go back to the smaller usage. Let's say my videographer, who's pretty amazing, says, I just got a little consulting deal with Disney, 
and I'm working on a movie, but they don't want me to move any of the videos we worked with on the movie from Studio O A to Studio B uh, over the internet. They don't want breaches. They don't want the data stored anywhere. Uh, in motion or at rest, it must be encrypted. Would, would one of these devices be perfect for a movie set? They're actually used for that exact purpose. And has Sony Pictures learned some lessons? And <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is the kind of thing I would want if I were Sony. Yeah, uh, we have quite a few of those types of companies using our products. That's great. Yeah. So you've got the admin mode, a password. You've got the user mode. Are there multiple users or just one user? One user, one admin. Okay. Yeah. You built a really solid device. We have. So we've built them to be tamper proof and tamper evident. That's a requirement for FIPS level three certification. But not yet ready to go underwater for marine biology. Uh, actually, they're IP56 and 57 certified, so they're water and dust resistant. Who should be using this beyond movie studios and healthcare providers and banks? and anyone with personally identifiable information? I would say everybody should be using it. Everybody nowadays has sensitive data. You're scanning your passport, your credit cards, your bank statements. Uh, you, you don't want to be uh, a victim of uh, identity fraud. So consumers should be using them, businesses, government, everybody should be encrypting their data. I agree, yeah. AS256 is excellent. I've been a, a strong proponent of encryption for years and I've said to people, you know, the breaches happen all the time and the methods are almost the same. It's a phishing attack, they click a link, they get infected, but the data at rest is never encrypted in the breaches that we hear about in the news. Correct, that's right. And it's so easy to pop in your drive and solve that problem. It, it is, it's, it's one of the main selling points of our products is that they're so easy to use, yet ultra secure. So it's just a matter of connecting the USB cable entering your 7 to 15 digit pin on an alphanumeric keypad so it can be a memorable number or a word or a combination of the two uh, and as soon as you've entered the correct pin press the unlock button and then the drive pops up like a normal non-encrypted hard drive. Now is this permanent memory for example if the battery in there if there is one loses its juice will I still be able to use my admin password or my... So the flash drives have a rechargeable battery inside and the reason we put the battery inside is because it's easier to enter the pin before you connect the drive to a USB port. The hard drives have no battery because you, you take the power from the USB port. So you just plug it in, enter your pin, and off you go. And so once I've plugged in the uh, portable one, even if it lost power, I still don't lose my password? No. And if the battery, uh, if the battery on the flash drive was to discharge fully, you just plug it in for a few seconds, it will charge, and that's enough time for you to enter your pin. Plug it in, and then it fully charges. What if I'm going through the airport with you know, X-ray scanners or T-ray scanners? They probably wouldn't put it in, but maybe the X-ray machine. Will that affect you at all? Uh, potentially, it, it could be a problem, but I've done it many times, and my data's stayed intact, so that's good to know. not a problem. Yeah, I'm always curious about taking a hard drive through yeah. an X-ray. Yeah. But you've done it and it works. Yeah, you need to keep uh, hard drives away from uh, magnets. It's, it's uh, a good idea not to keep uh, hard drives near magnets. You know, otherwise, you could suffer data loss. You have developed a fantastic encrypted storage suite of products. Thank you. I'm so impressed. And I always like to say made in the USA with pride. But today, I'm happy to say made in the UK with pride. Thank you very much. And I'm going to be a happy customer. And I hope everybody watching this all my friends out there, check out his website. Is it is it i-storage? No, it's istorage-uk.com. I-storage, the little letter I there, istorage-uk.com. And we can find your devices on Amazon and Newegg. That's correct. And have them the next day. Or order direct and get it laser etched like I did. Awesome. Thank you. Great hot seat. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. And then come back next time for an exciting episode of Cyber Defense TV. Thank you.